Mr. Mike Compton from Nashville, Tennessee, everybody. Thanks I heard there was some kind of mad beach party going on here. Is this the place? This is the place. This yeah. All right. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> we were just having a look at uh, what you reminded, reminded me and, and all of us about the, the, the earlier chords. And I was just about to say something about it. But um, well, don't let me interrupt you. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say that you could say it and, and you understand it much better. Um, but completely different chords, a bit more, a bit more lonesome, you know, in, in some ways. W would you mind just talking about like, you know, you know, kind of how you found your way towards this one rather than the conventional Kenny Baker way? I think Baker's chords in sort of sound kind of swingy to me, which is it's completely changed the way that the thing feels for me. And I, you know, it's 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 lonesome moonlight walks. It's not swingy moonlight walks, and and uh, to me, it's it just kind of takes the it doesn't seem to me what what Monroe might have been feeling when he wrote the thing. I, I like to hang out on the D minor longer. D. That's D minor all the way up to here. G up to A or A7. I like that note. Very nice. I like that note in there. And then back to D minor, my hand's dry. Let me put a little spit on my finger so I can hold on. All right, down. You caught me off guard. <laughs> All right, back to the second half of the A, same thing. Da -da -ba -da -ba -da. Da -da -da -ba -da -da -da. No change here. Da -da 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 -da. Still D minor. You can hold it all the way through da 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 and then change to G or da now F. D da been playing this this chord here nice which is sort of a takeoff on this thing that he does on um uh wayfaring stranger that has that sound right here So, so we're taking out so so many of, of the the major chords, which makes it sound more lonesome, like immediately. Like, I, I'm just refreshing myself on that on that recording, and uh, it, it, there's just you know the the B flat and all that. It, it, it makes it pretty happy, and but just when you're you know, like when you're singing it and, and like humming it, and da, 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 that's it's just right in the, in in the lonesome part of it which is uh which is just an, an interesting you know trip for me to think about even though i kind of know in, in my mind that you know bill he was writing the, the tunes and maybe he had chords in mind and maybe the maybe some sometimes the chords would get developed and sometimes maybe a bluegrass boy would 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 oh i like that and maybe he didn't think of that all that kind of stuff but uh, uh to the maybe modern world of bluegrass or or these arrangements like they're set in stone like chiseled and chiseled and granite and granite it's like oh that's you know but now we're thinking about okay there's more possibilities here like what you know yeah. what chords are my I'm, I'm feeling would you, you, you want to speak to that a little bit because I, I find that a very fascinating concept it's not just all as rigid as it can seem well it just takes it takes all the creepy out of it which yeah yeah yeah, yeah. To, to me it seems like there's supposed to be some in there you know if you ever ever yeah. around Monroe when the moon was full and he's looking up at it and he's going ah it's just thinking as high as he can and, and you just make bumps jump up all over you. You know, it, it takes that con that aspect of it clean out.
love the tone that that you were pulling getting out of there um you're not playing excessively hard but you're getting absolutely everything out of the mandolin and and, and it doesn't it, sound like it bites it bites exactly it bites. it's it's not it's not I don't, I don't, I don't have a real pretty sounding tremolo like you do. You get, you can play nice and smooth. David does too. If you, you just get him to do it. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe that I'm sitting here right now with one of the greatest musicians in the last 10,000 years. And he's alive on this planet with us right now. Mississippi. I'm not even the greatest musician at my house, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running. That, those, uh, those things you just did, that chord work you just did is like indescribably beautiful. It is. Well, I don't even know what that chord is. I just know that, that it really suits my ear and it sounds like one of those things that Bill plays. Now it's that's like honor style in essence right there. I, I was like, we're not sure what it is, but we likes it. I mean, like, I'm that's sure. All that counts. I think that you might be the first person ever to put those notes together into a chord. Oh, I don't know about that. It is the perfect sound for, for this thing. And one thing I want to draw everyone's attention to is like how deep the psychology goes with like, you know, with with Mike and, and this in this music, you know, I, and I, I can't remember if I, if I actually heard this from you or, or I heard this about you, like that, that you knew how to tune your your mandolin sharp or flat to the recording by just looking at the spine of the album. I didn't have anybody to play with and to tell me that the, the records were out of tune. I just knew that my mandolin had, I had to go up or down depending on what color the thing was. <laughs> I just love that. It's... I was living in one end of the house and everybody else was on the other end because I was driving them crazy. I, I love that. <laughs> that just the, the um the, the amount of commitment to the to 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 understanding what's going on with everything and so like you know we, we take a tune like this and and like you know you've 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 probably heard uh more and and definitely as much recorded material from from munro as exists th th than anyone and so like you know so you hear baker's album and it's like okay you know it's like you know it's great we love it and, and all that kind of stuff but, but what else is in there and so this is like you know th there are different levels of, of, of the monroe like you know thing and and then like you know if you're really trying to like really understand the psychology then then there's like this this extra level which is like research mm -hmm. level you know kind of in, in a way it's like you're finding all of the different so it's like this is a workshop from 1964 it just happens to be the best version of this tune yeah you know, to, to play or you know subjectively the, the best version it to, to me it sounds like the the, the best version because it like like you say you know it includes the the more of the, the lonesome ethos to it and, and well, the, the version of it where pete pete didn't know the the chords to it exactly i don't know if he wasn't there whenever on there on your uh Tape, by the way, I, which I haven't heard that one before. So there's there's stuff I that are floating around that I don't have. But thanks for putting that up. Oh. Um, I I started playing a lot of uh, other kind of things, trying to make it sound more full and finding things that suited me instead of trying to be Bill Monroe all the time. And uh, you know, there it was surprising that there was some stuff in there that I didn't know was, what was there. But but mainly um it was an effort to sound more full because of having to go out and do solo gigs and and you can't just stand up there and reproduce solos off of records and and uh, amuse anybody you know unless you're you know like die died in the wool um monroe fans who only want to hear what bill played you know and there of course there's a lot of a lot of us that are that way uh but there's the majority of people aren't like that so it's it's just trying to fill space you know and then then the, the easy to get to chords uh, out of the chord positions you talk about so much on your uh <coughs> excuse me on your your double stop things and where uh, all of that stuff connects and i've got getting into a lot playing a lot more open string kind of thing and <laughs> Because it's there and it's okay. easy to get to, you know. Love you know, it. and it's, 
it's just right there. It's, it's, it's kind of like you can find a lot of those kind of things by just moving like one fret up. Uh, Hartford used to talk about uh, playing, playing music being sort of like driving a riverboat where you, you, you just move a little bit. You, if you do this, then you find yourself sideways in the river. <laughs> ah, what a great <laughs> metaphor oh, for life. And yeah. yeah. So if you if you go just a little ways, you can not only is it easier to correct if you make a mistake, but you also might find something really magical that's just sitting there waiting for you to put your finger on it. Absolutely. Those drones on the on the the open D string and, and finding the melody, just, just working them up, you know, one little note note in the scale at a time. And, and all the tone and all the you're not having to yeah. I mean there's more than one place to find that note which I, which I'm sure you pointed out I don't mean I'm probably just covering old ground but no I, I, we, we were just mostly just sticking to kind of Monroe's you know arrangement low and and high and then some just basic arpeggiation but we didn't um, we didn't go go much more into voicing, which is which is really great for them, you know, to for them to hear and and for me to hear too. It's it's awesome. Now uh, uh, that's all left hand discussion. But what I want to ask you, and I, I think you've got one of my favorite right hands on the planet of anybody who flat picks any instrument, that is guitar or anything else. You have these uh, really this really beautiful texture in your brush, just like brush strokes of a great painter. And I call it, you've got this fantastic, desirable dirtiness in your playing. That, uh, I, I, can you verbalize what it is you do with your right hand that makes it so beautiful? It just every time I hear you play, it just gives me goosebumps. The right hand work. I mean, of course, the left hand work too, but that, that, that thing you do with your right hand, is that, have you ever explained that? I don't, I don't know. I, I have to fight, fight with it all the time just to try to get it to work. Like I have a concept in my mind that, of how it should work and what it and and uh, a realization of what it feels like when it actually does um which when it's actually working just right and it my as i've gotten older my skin's gotten slicker so it's it's harder to hold on to the pick without ha having a piece of candy in my mouth or something to make my hands sticky mm -hmm. if i can get the pick to stay there and just let it flop then you know that that going back and forth across that string, so it's you don't you don't really hear the attack going either way. It's it's more of a and it's not an effort to play through both strings at the same time. It's just whatever the tempo is, and you just let that that be my guide. Then, but it's it's a rub more than than picking notes out. It's it's more of a rub like the fiddle player. Kind of takes that click out of it, but I but I like the sound of the box too, and I don't I don't try to I don't try to take that out, which is uh, some of the players over the years. It's not a lot of the young players can do it where they you only hear the string sound. You don't really hear the you don't hear the box pushing air, but I think that's an integral part of that the sound that Bill got, and and it's it's also when you get rhythmic devices going on, you know, something that's not just even alternating stroke. That's also part of the rhythm that, that you're putting into the thing. So um, that's, it's, it's a, it's a sort of like a multi-level. It's like a sandwich. There's, there's more things all put together to make the sound. Um, but it's mostly just pushing through the strings and not picking at them so much, which is, you know, when you can really kind of lean on it. I heard of, I heard of uh, uh, some tape uh, just recently that I had not heard of Monroe out on the West Coast. He had taken uh, Doug Green with him to play the guitar, and he was at uh, um, oh, yeah. uh, Phil and Vivian Williams' house probably heard this there he was just sitting there playing tunes yeah. but he got on to uh, poor white folks and there was i was just kind of absent-mindedly listening to it but he got into a section where 
he wasn't playing the melody. He was just kind of keeping time in between, but it just like jumped out and grabbed me. It was the way he was pushing on the string. It was just kind of like wallering on that A string, you know, it was like back and forth and, and just pulling the tone out of it. And I thought, there it is. That's why he sounds like, like he does, you know, and I went back and listened to that probably half a dozen times and I can't find what, what jumped out at me, but it was just, the way he was pushing the string back and forth, you could really hit, you could just almost see the string being rubber bandy under his pick, you know, and the tone was just pouring out of it. And I, and I well, you know, that's kind of like my new model. If I can never find it again, I'm just going to go listen to it on a loop for about an hour. I dig that. So the, the, uh, an idea about, we, we'll, we'll get a question from Gina here in, in just one second. Um, but, but just, just to, just to, you know, just to say it, say it, say it, say it one more time. This is this is not not holding the pick hard. It's, it's not holding the pick tight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, but it's but it, it, it's like it's like a hard flop. It's not a soft flop, mm -hmm. but it's like you're pushing. He's been you're, you're pushing with your loose pick grip. You're pushing hard, but you're not holding hard. No. Maybe. Is that kind of it? Yeah, yeah, it is. I, that's the way that I've I've, I've interpreted like it, and it's it just feels it's more. It feels like. It feels like more of a rub under the pick than than just pecking at it. I love that. The, the I like I like to watch your right hand. Uh, it, it looks really it looks really fantastic. It looks unique. It, it's like if I just saw a video of your hand, I'd know instantly. <laughs> Mike. Also, when I hear anything you do on the radio, I know that's Mike. That right hand. It's like, and, and I don't hear anyone ever who can who does the, what you do with your right hand. Even when people try to do like Mike Compton style break, or they, or they try to emulate your like uh, man of conscious sorrow break, it can't even come close. Never. Have you ever heard anyone that, that really, has any kid come up to you and say, "Oh, I can play Mike Compton," and then he goes, "Wow, you actually sound like me." Has that ever happened? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that that person exists. <laughs> <laughs> that instantly recognizable thing. You hear those those first four notes to Man of Constant Sorrow, and you, you you immediately know what's going on. And and that's what you know. I did an, an interview with Bela, and, and I was like, you know, I was like, who's some of your favorite creative people around town? And he's like, well, Mike Compton. <laughs> you can always hear like within the first few few seconds, and that and that, you know, so many so many of the great you know musicians instantly recognizable. Yeah. Remember that TV show back in the old days called Name That Tune. Well, if 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 they had a, a show like that that said name that mandolin player, I I could hear maybe one or two notes at the most, and I'd know that's Mike. <laughs> that's Gina, you know? um, Roll, Roland is that way. You can, you can tell instantly who it is when you hear him play. Uh, at least I can. Tell uh, and and uh, quite a number of mandolin players the same way. It's just it's. It's sort of the same uh, as listening to banjo players and their roles. You can tell if you listen to them who it is by the way they pull the string. And, you know, one finger is a little bit harder than the others. Uh, the amount of constant sorrow thing is just a Bill Monroe solo. That's and all in the world it was. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. You got 20 years worth of work out of it. <laughs> And, and really, you know, gosh, it's it, it's so good. And uh, it's also that way when you play the guitar. Yeah, I my, play the guitar well. And and singer. And, and, I don't know about that. While, while we're thinking about it, um, I just want to just point out that uh, Mike Compton is it .com or .net? .net. Yeah, Mike Compton .net. You can you can have a good look at um at, at his new 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 products and and a, a lot of fun stuff on there of course he's he's got his uh, online lessons um that he's teaching but then also there's, there's an amazing new project with uh with norman blake and that's called uh gallop to georgia gallop to georgia yeah that there you can get um uh, a, a teaching um combo package with that off the website some cool stickers picks hats um the mic oh, hats on there well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not a hat. It's a, it's a, it's 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 John Harford's hat. It's a CD. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> I've, I've got John Harford's hat here if you want it. <laughs> uh, I've got one of them. Rotten Taters album, Mike Compton and David Long, Helen Highwater Stringman, a lot of really good good stuff, and, and T-shirts. Um, so and stickers and, and and a lot of fun stuff. So check out Mike Compton. Well, I have a full line of hair products too. 
the list pairs good with the hats and, and, and i need to check out that that, that hartford um dina It, well, it, it's it's a very elusive thing, and it, and it, um, if if I don't sit down and play every day, it escapes me. It's just it's just hard to keep it. I I don't I just I do some tremolo things that are that I've got written out that I got out of a an old old violin book, and uh, it 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 was well there was two of them. They were about this tall, the large format like they used to put, and it's nothing but double stop drills through through all of them and it it can get really really dry but most of it is stuff like this uh, let's see let's see which where is it Size. Yeah, I don't use so much, and then some of them go. And and any kind of combination holding this down. Ouch. All that kind of stuff. It's, it's it's torments what it is, uh, but you holding the notes so long, and and most all of this is. The, the same kind of stuff that fiddle players do when they play bluegrass but, uh, and, and Monroe too. I, I just use that. To, to try to feel my hand rubbing across the strings, making sure that the pressure is the same going both directions and I, I'm hitting both strings, not just one and doing this. Because that ain't playing double stops. That's playing one on the way down and not on the way back up. Or this, that ain't double stops either. And try to hear you go through it and back. This is the hard part is bringing that back with, with the same attack as you are going down. This is easy. This is not. Huh? I was just saying that these are these are the, the, the nuances, like important details. It's like, you know, we can play the same notes, but but then like you've been thinking about this stuff for a very decades, very long time, going back to it every every day, practicing it every day. This is elusive stuff. Well, it's just a, it's a sound and it's and it's and it's and it's also a lot more of a ergonomically friendly way to approach playing mandolin you'll end up hurting yourself if you're if you're doing something that's that doesn't feel natural um, that's a very good point you know Munro was able to to sound like Munro and sound and sound great you know up into his 80s and you yeah. know and, and and so you know uh ergonomics like uh, munner was one of the most efficient musicians of, of all time you, you, a lot of times you look at him it's like well, he's not doing nothing i could do that uh -uh. <laughs> that's part, uh -uh. part of the mystery <laughs> exactly. exactly really yeah. good question we did uh james was asking us if you would wouldn't mind showing us exactly how you're you're holding your pick uh, uh, let's see well it's on more sort of in the area of the ball of the thumb here but but on top on the top edge of my index finger not on this part that i see people play this way and and that makes a real pretty sound but if you're playing soft or if you've got electricity helping you get your volume out i can't i can't make much sound that way but with it your index finger sort of curled under like you're holding a trigger or you know that way then it lays on top like that so that it just kind of crosses over there where you've got a bone there and, and a, a hard surface here. It's, it's not exact, just however it feels good. And it, and if you hold it the least bit loose, then it's going to want to flop around and it's also going to want to spin on you. But, um, should be Monroe's argument, uh, his point about holding the pick 
but you say you don't want to hold it any tighter than it than it takes to keep it in there. If somebody wants to come up and pull it out of your hand, they ought to be able to. Oh wow! And you know that's so that gives you a sort of a, a gauge on how much pressure. Of course, when you're playing, if you need more pressure, I mean, you could always do that, and just so that whenever you push through a little harder, you don't lose the pick. But it's you know that's that's about the size of it. That's only the only change I make. The rest of it is when you go across the string, it just it the pressure that you're putting on the string, it it wants to come up, and and when you rub across that, it goes to the other side. The same thing, it it goes down, coming back up. So it's I try to get it to where the the uh, the string is is rubbing on either sides of the pick and not, you know, I I know a lot of people play with Buck White used to play with just no more point than you could could hold getting out and that's the way he liked it but i don't i don't feel like i can't feel the string that way when it's it's a it's a matter of being able to feel what the string is doing uh, under underneath the pressure that's going back and forth on it that to, to try to figure out how to how to pull the tone out of it because it, it's it's you know it's that's why it takes so long if you have to have a mandolin for a long time and play it for a while to be able to, to figure out how to play it because you can't just go get one off the wall and say well this is it this is what i want because you have to play it and get and get familiar with it otherwise you can't you can't milk those sounds out of it i remember uh you mentioned in one time that that when you mike uh recorded um with bill at, at least on uh, maybe one or two sessions with with Butch yeah. Robbins, and and I, I remember you relating that um, it was a really um, profound experience in the sense uh, that mm -hmm. it was like stuff you could only perceive when you were actually playing with Bill, like uh, about like tone or or or, or feel or, or or something like that. I'm not yeah. sure articulate. Would you could you talk a little bit about that? It was it was a lot easier to do it when he was sitting in front of me. Right. It's, I can play just like him when he's on the record and I'm playing along with him. <laughs> well, because he was sitting, you know, like five feet in front of me and I and I, I could watch his hand and watch what he was pick, was doing. It's really, it's, it really is. I know this is a sort of a silly kind of an illustration, but it's, it's that thing where you're doing the pencil and it looks like it's made out of rubber. Hmm. It's what his pick looked like. And I've done it was standing behind him too, looking over his shoulder. I swear his pick looked like it was doing like this and his in his hand, but you know, but it's that illusion. It was so loose that it looked like it was bending, but I know it wasn't. It was just sitting in front. And the whole thing that made it work was to match the speed that he was going across the strings and try to match the posture of his hand mm. um, and try to make all the nuances in, in the tone match up with him and then you know, whenever I, I kind of settled down and stopped being freaked out, what was happening? <laughs> that it matching the speed and the way he was going through the strings, and then it, the whole thing blended yeah. into. But up until that point, I was I wasn't being much help. There's a there's a particular tune um, um, that that stri that strikes me as like, um, and and I love it because it's like. Um, and that, that whole album is, is interesting. Uh, uh, what is it? Is it um, Ground or Tender Focus or is it? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's one called I'd Like to Be Over Yonder. And, <laughs> and jeepers, like, you, you know, like like Mike is playing so close to Bill that that, you know, it's it's nearly it's nearly identical. And, and, and so that's a really good set if you want to hear Bill and you want to hear Mike and, and how, how close they are, you know, check out um, I'd Like to Be Over Yonder. It's on YouTube, and you can get the album from from Butch and, and, and probably different places like that. I, I have a question: um, Do you think he always played like that, or or was there a transition at some point with his pick being floppy? I Earl Scruggs said that whenever he played with Bill, that Bill played with a real stiff, uh, long teardrop shaped tortoise shell pick, and he and he held his and he held his pick more like that. Wow, with his hand out like that. That with his fingers out like that. Okay, interesting. And he and he and he held it more at the tip of of his index finger. 
Interesting. You can see on some of them, you can see them playing. But right, yeah, yeah, I think I've seen that too. Yeah, Billy didn't. He didn't seem to uh, have the same grip all the way through his career. It, it changed a little, and and after the fifties, where he was, you know, you can tell there was so much anger in his playing. Um, when he, I, I think. And I, I've heard Butch Robbins say, Butch's, Butch's way of explaining it was, he said he thought Bill kind of played his hands out because he hit, hit the thing so hard for so long that he had to change the way he was playing. And then that was where that thing came in with the, with the knuckles sticking out. I and I think what I've kind of come to that point myself where you get wearing these joints, um, which uh, Gina makes it harder to do what I was trying to explain. Um, you have to get some support and and i think that's where that comes in where your middle finger has to come up under your oh, yeah, uh, yeah. under your index so that this joint doesn't get so much wear but you so which makes it easier to play that upstroke smooth because then you've got two fingers coming up instead of just that one these are the secrets folks uh I definitely recall seeing that 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 middle knuckle out there, and sometimes I'll I'll try to imitate it and be like, "What am I doing? I don't, I don't know what I'm doing." But but like these are these are the secrets that that take like decades to like to like get. And and thank you. So it, it is really happy if you do that back there. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can think to do that, just to tuck it under a little, and and use it that way, then that. seems to make it even out wow these are like you know just a couple maybe you know an eighth of an inch or something like that you know yeah just um, a teeny bit just a teeny bit of support to keep your and keep that knuckle from flopping around back and forth so much like that that's that's an awful lot of wear on that little joint th these are really really great answers and and this is like you know i, I talk a lot of a lot about the notes and like you know uh, I talk a lot about you know the feel and all, all this kind of stuff. I don't talk t talk as much about the tone because to me the tone is much more number one difficult to, difficult to get number two difficult to describe and it is a really really advanced you know thing. So, so I, I, a lot of times I, I'm just like let's just try to get the notes and get the feel going you know a little bit and then, <laughs> and then hopefully the more folks are, are listening to the to the tone. Uh, you you've got you've got a tone that's recognizable. You've you've already got a good tone and um, you you don't just play the same tone. All time i mean i appreciate that thank you you know that <laughs> I, I just, I, there's so much that i love i love to try to sound a little bit like david a little bit like compton well it's 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 tone of voice it's like your tone of voice i have a special new way of holding the pick yeah um, pat i've got a patent application for this it's, i hold it like this whoa yeah the <laughs> It's called it's called the howdy. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. My my Glockman something. <laughs> Kukius. <laughs> Would you be up for taking a, a couple more questions? Sure. I was just fixing to say, do y'all have any questions? I've been sitting here running my mouth. It's so great. This is exactly the stuff that that everybody needs to hear. If you got a question, just raise your hand up, and 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 now's a real good time. No, sir. I float, I float along here on that top edge, pretty much. I hold it out away from me so that I, my stomach doesn't, my stomach doesn't keep the back from vibrating. That's to save you some money on a, a tone uh, guard. Some, some instruments really are affected by that. Some, some don't seem like it doesn't seem to matter, but it's, it kind of depends on uh, how, how thick the wood plates are. If, if it's made to where it can really push the sound out, then it, it will. Anything you do, hands on it, you know, what up against your stomach, that'll, that'll all, it'll deaden it, sure as the world. And I, I personally forget to do that a lot of times. I'll just be like, you know, I'll get nervous and excited and I'll just be holding that mandolin up against my, my chest as much as I can. And then it'll, 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 sound, it'll sound thin and then you just let, you just let, let, let it breathe a little yeah. bit. Yeah, Burroughs mandolin had, if you ever saw it, this edge was worn off at a diagonal. It was just kind of flat. The, the, the sharp edge of this binding was just gone from him rubbing his arm across that, with that polyester suit. It just sanded that, <laughs> sanded that point right off. Uh, 
But what, you know, what that, you might try that instead of coming at it so much that way, with it, with it coming over this way, but I mean, really, and you can, you can keep a, a sort of a, a nice straight angle and, and go back and forth. You still get, you still maybe get the feeling of security that your, your arm is on it, but, but not, at, you know, it's not really going to do that much if you just pull that edge to you because you've, you've still got the majority of it can can do what it needs to do. Right. I think it's the main thing, make sure you're not being tense when you do that. Yeah. That'll hurt you all the way up to the back of your neck. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just just enough to get it done. Don't, that's, that's the thing you can't overdo. I see Wyatt on here. I've been trying to talk to him a little bit uh, a couple of days about about grip and, and taking care of himself. Uh, I've paid uh, uh, acupuncture doctors and chiropractors a lot of money over the years to try to keep me running. So, you, you know, it really does matter after, after you get past 50, it, it matters a lot. <laughs> whatever, whatever the ergonomic, most relaxed and ergonomic way that you can find to do it is the way to do it because it will hurt you after a while. Things wear out. And, and you want to be able to play, you know, all the way, you know, all the way up there and, and, and ergonomics, like, you know, that's what it's all about. And, 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 about what feels natural. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other questions? We'd love to, we'd love to invite y'all to, to chime in. Uh, if not, I, I'd love to ask, ask Mike, um, uh, you know, a couple questions myself. Um, first, first one being, uh, what, what are you into th these days, like um, w with with Monroe and, and like you know, because it's always it's just like there's there's always more. What, what, what's 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 fascinating this week? Oh goodness, let me say, I had, I just rewrote. I'm I'm rewriting a lot of transcriptions because uh, here's a real interesting thing. Uh, I heard Bayless say something one time that I I thought was just psychedelic hogwash, and then I found out that it it was true. <laughs> love it already yeah um he was playing a song he said try playing that in c sharp and uh and then i listened to him do it and i thought well that's just crazy but i i guess i don't know i don't think i i got his point i've, I've had, to, had to rewrite a lot of uh my transcriptions for for people uh because i realized that, that you know people start asking for this stuff that's that's you know, not as easily uh, accessible. And I have to make sure that I've, I've got it written down right so that I'm not giving them false information. And uh, there's enough of that out there. Uh, so when I look at it, I go back and I listen to the transcription and I get something that I, you know, maybe 10 years ago or five years ago or two years ago, and I put it on and I start listening through it and I'm checking my transcriptions. There's not one time over the last 10 or 15 years that I've done this where my transcription was right. And it's because I haven't, my mind has not developed to the point where it actually recognizes what's being played. Feel you there hundred percent. It's more and more all the time. Hubert Davis used to tap was a great banjo player from North Carolina that I worked with. Uh, he, he, he learned from Earl as Earl was learning how to play the banjo. I worked with him when I first came to Nashville. He said, you hear something new every time you hear it. And I thought he was crazy for saying that, but it's true. It's, it's like, you know, you hear the story about when the ships first came to this continent and the, the Indians couldn't see the ships because they'd never seen one. They didn't, couldn't understand the concept of what a ship was. So it was parked out there in the, in the harbor and they couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. That is profound. And there it is until their, their medicine man sort of described to them what the concept was and then bam, there it sat. It's the same way with, with Bill's, Bill's music or anybody's music. If, you, if your mind is not educated to the point to where the player is, then you can't hear everything they're playing because you haven't experienced it before. So your mind fills in the gaps with what you know already. And that's not what's on the record. <laughs> so you have to listen to it over and over and up for years until you get to the point to where you recognize that 
that that tone that you've been missing all that time and that's that's every one of my transcriptions has been that way bar none i've learned to love the taste of crow because i eat a lot of it here <laughs> and, and and that's just the, and it's so it's so esoteric and it's so like i'm not even sure that like you know necessarily that monroe you know knew what all, all he was doing all the time i don't think so i think he was just winging it yeah, yeah, and I, I'd hear him say, oh, "The good Lord just put that right there in my hands." It's like, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. But, but if y'all want to know, like, th this is the like, this is the top level of it, and and there's a lot of hum, you know, like required humility that's that's built into the study because you will hear the new note every year. It's like graduation. It's like, oh, you get to hear one more new note in the song that you thought you knew knew exactly, and then that yeah. becomes your favorite note, and you're like, "Yay, I got a new note!" And yeah. it can make you really happy. And, uh, it's, it's that note that makes the, the song sound like it's supposed to. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that bit about like your brain filling in like the, 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 the what you think it's supposed to be is just a, an immensely fascinating uh, psychological concept. And I thought you articulated that really well. I love that. that you I, I grew up listening to uh, uh, Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass and Herb Alpert and, and Mitch Miller and, and uh, Ray Charles and Ella Fitzgerald and, and whatever. Strauss waltzes, whatever my my parents had, and when I first started listening to Monroe, and he sounded out of tune, and um, and it was there was there, it was just like learning how to drink beer. It was a, <laughs> it really was. It's there was a learning curve. I had to I had to develop a taste for it. But then you know after after I started getting into it, I couldn't I couldn't put it down. Um, Great analogy because it's intense and it's unpredictable uh, and, and it's real tasty. It's very straightforward and there's, n there's no pretense about it. And that's, that's what I like about it. It's just, it's just, here it is. Absolutely. Here's my story and I'm going to tell it to you the way I feel it today, which is maybe more grouchy than yesterday, or it might be more sweet or maybe the tempo may be different or, or whatever. It's real music. That's real. That's real. Uh, I, I, what I've, I've been doing basically yeah, it, it, I've, I've, I've been rewriting the transcriptions and I've also been working on some some real kind of real quirky weird 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 number and Smith stuff uh, and trying to put open strings in up up the neck uh, and just keep keep doing that kind of stuff Well, it's really strange, and but that's why I like about it. Uh, would you? Um, I know you said you got to <laughs> slide to here in a second, but would love to hear you. Um, just you know, pl play a tune of of your choosing something that that um that you're really feeling these days, if you'd like I, to. There's. I have been working for years on trying to play a decent mandolin version of um, what is that thing? There, there was a tune that. It's like decades of fiddlers that played with Bill worked on uh, uh, fiddlers. Is it pastime? That sounds right. Is yeah. it? There, there's fiddlers dream. I think fiddlers pastime. Or Vassar was the last one to put anything in it. I think he added a transition to A. I don't know if I, if I can even play this right now or not. But that's what like came to mind. It's just just trying to work through what what's there and make it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, that is so cool. I love the A to the C to the D thing. That is getting around. That's so cool. That was so great. Oh my gosh, man. That, Thank you for. Is that, what that is? A fit, I Fiddler's can't remember pain. off the top of my head. That, that sounds right, though. The Fiddler's Pastime, or, or uh, I, I want to say it's, it's, it's that one and not, and not the Fiddler's Dream, but I can't remember. I don't know either. <laughs> well, I love anyway, you. That's, that's, almost, that's almost to the point of the Give me a bite of that cake, Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. <laughs> So y'all, if, if you want to go deeper with with the understanding and and you know what he's talking about is, is intriguing, you know, get on MikeCompton.net and and send him a message about about lessons. You know, if there's particular stuff you want to work on, you know, particular tunes, you know, particular concepts, motifs, art, articulation, the droney stuff, you know, the double stops. There's so much that that you know Mike can help you with. Um, get on MikeCompton.net and and get you some CDs and and, and sign up for some lessons and. And, uh, I've, stopped, I've, tried to, I've, I've stopped trying to be an academic because I don't, I don't think like that. I would also like to add, I've taken lessons from Mr. Compton, and his philosophy might be the best I've ever heard any musician ever give uh, advice of anybody I've ever had. So if you're ever feeling down on your plan, uh, go talk to Mike because he can talk you out of a hole. That's beautiful. Thanks. That'll be that, $400. That's a healing thing right there, <laughs> you know. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike. This has been tremendous, I'm, I'm, and I'm proud of you. And just every, everything you do for for Monroe style. Also, the the Monroe style, uh, the Monroe mandolin camp, you know, is is a big deal there in in, in Nashville, and they, they have it d different places. Um, you know, with with COVID, I think that it's been um, uh, um, online, but but keep keep that on your radar in the future because that is a big big experience. Y'all keep y'all keep doing the stuff with Chris. Um, I don't know if you, you know it or not. Nobody plays this style of music better than Chris does. That he, is he's mighty, one of the heavy, heavyweights in this in this style. So mighty kind of you, and I've well, learned so much from you. It's, uh, it's the truth. It's not kindness. Well, I I, I feel like it's nice, uh, <laughs> and I, I want to show everybody this this picture just before we go. Of uh, this is uh, you know how long you know I've been learning from 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 Mike and and David, uh, but this is one of my favorite pictures right here. If y'all if y'all can see this. Uh, can y'all see that? Woo! This is this is Mike and, and me at IBMA 1993 or 94 on the river there at Owensboro, and he's showing me the the fourth part to uh, Old Ebenezer Scrooge, I believe. I hope that was after I learned it the right way. <laughs> that was after I learned it the right way. <laughs> and that stuck with me, and and it was just so so kind of you to do that, and and so kind of you to to be with us here. And, uh, and and thank you very much for, for spending this time with us. I'm happy to do it. Maybe we could do it again down the road sometime. It'd be fantastic. Sure. You get David to talk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Have a have a great day, and we'll. Thanks. So, so we're, we're going to keep going, everybody. I'm just probably going to sign off. All we right. got a couple more people to. Thank you again, Mike. I'm going to go eat some lunch. Bye, folks. Lots of love, man. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, folks. Like, I mean, that's the that's the stuff right there. And uh, we'll just go ahead and and uh, you know get get back to, uh, to 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 James and and John uh, before before we're we're signing off here. But that was a massive, massive transition uh, transition transmission um, from from Mike. And you know, to have Peter last week and 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 Mike this this week is just 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 so amazing because like you know th these are the guys that you know along with David. And, and and Frank and, and and Red and Ronnie, you know, these are the guys that, that know the most uh, about this stuff. 
you know, and who have obsessed about it to the nuclear detail, uh, you know, and, and like you can just, you know, just so much humility in, in what he's saying. And that is what's required with this music. You know, here's one of the top experts of all time saying that like he's constantly going back and revising his, you know, arrangements and, and all this kind of stuff, finding the new note. So I, I could go on and on about how much I appreciated Mike and, and everything he said there about the pick, about the tone, about, you know, it's like it's, it's massive. He's one of the he's one of the true uh, disciples. Absolutely.